This is a recording of a live webinar held on August 30th, 2023, the third in our four-part series entitled Expert Insights Industrial Efficiency. Join us for the one remaining live event September 6th, focusing on water treatment, or check out past recordings or other demos on our channel. Click the link in the description to learn more about upcoming webinars or to follow us on LinkedIn to be in the loop of upcoming events. Thank you all very much for joining our call today. Um, the reason we did it, this is a third of our uh, webinar series here. The reason we're focusing on this is because A, we have Fact Check coming up in two weeks where we're gonna be exhibiting and a lot of us are gonna be talking. Um, and something that's kind of come up quite a bit, you know, in the past few years, um, as well as things like uh, cost reduction, you know, with the uncertain economy, things like sustainability and reducing your overall cost, uh, which is why I think today's topic on uh, zirconium, catalyst for your pretreatment process, is a great, uh, great topic. Not only is it a greener pretreatment uh, solution, but also can save overall costs for your line. And to give this presentation today, we have Michelle Bloomfield. Michelle Bloomfield uh, is a technical specialist for Dubois Chemical. She's got 35 years experience in the specialty chemical in industry, uh, focusing on cleaning, uh, pretreatment, and rust preventives. She's been with Dubois for about 15 years. She came over with us through the Galaxy uh, acquisition a while back. So uh, without further ado then, uh, Michelle, I'm going to give you the lead. Thanks, Max. Good afternoon to everyone joining this presentation. First, I'd like to thank you for joining our webinar on the zirconium chemistry and how it can impact your pain pretreatment process. In this webinar, we will be discussing the benefits of zirconization compared to traditional phosphate chemistries. These benefits will help your operation become more sustainable as you strive to remain viable in today's challenging environment. So before jumping into the benefits of zirconium, let's look at the definition of sustainability and how it will apply to your pretreatment needs. Sustainability is basically the ability to maintain or support a process continuously over time. So when we look at the three principles of sustainability, we're looking at protecting our environment and society while remaining economically viable, or to put it simply, we're looking at protecting our people, our planet, and profits. Our objective when looking at pretreatment programs is to find a program that one, conserves our natural resources. We want to find ways um, to save energy, water, etc. Also supporting a healthy workforce and community. We want to use chemicals that are safe to be around. And lastly, we have to remain financially viable. When choosing a chemical program, we want to take into consideration, one, what is the energy consumption going to be, as well as water consumption. And then with any pretreatment line, there's a lot of labor and maintenance costs involved in ensuring that the washer is operating optimally. Also, we want to use environmentally friendly chemicals um, because we have to look at what we're discharging to our municipality or um, waste disposing. Um, into the ground, and we also want to be cost competitive. So when we look at all of these um, aspects of what we're looking for, we want to make certain that we can also use this in our um, current washer and that you'll be able to maintain the performance requirements desired. So in choosing a paint pretreatment program, your options 
can include a zinc phosphate program, an iron phosphate program, or a nano ceramic program. And in this presentation, we will be um, looking at zirconium based chemistries. So now let's go ahead and look at the positives and negatives of each type of program. So starting with the zinc phosphate, um, the benefit to zinc phosphate is that you typically can um, develop a high to superior performance coating. And with that, that's telling us we can achieve high salt spray um, results. However, it typically requires a minimum of six stages in a washer. And to produce a zinc phosphate coating, um, high temperatures are typically required, which is going to result in high energy consumption. Also a negative is that it does produce a high volume of sludge, which um, can cause frequent maintenance on the on this particular stage, um, which includes decanning solutions, cleaning nozzles, et cetera. And then the last area is wastewater restrictions. With a zinc phosphate, um, you have zinc in your line, which is a heavy metal. So there, um, this has to be treated properly um, when um, removing it from the washer. It also contains phosphates and in some areas of the country there are restriction on phosphates. So that could also be a negative and the pH of this particular um, solution is extremely acidic. It will run in the um, pH of twos. So typically um, there has to be um, pH neutralization occurring to take it from a corrosive mode. Going on um, to the next chemistry um, that is available, it's iron phosphate. And typically um, the corrosion protection that we get, it's not going to be as good as a zinc phosphate. You'll typically get standard to high performance coatings, but it's more difficult to get that superior um, performance coating. This usually can be applied anywhere from a two stage washer up to a five or six stage washer. And the amount of stages in the washer typically impact, impacts the type of performance that you're going to get out of the coating. You will need um, some heat on your iron phosphate, but it's much lower than with the zinc phosphate. Um, temperatures typically are like 110 to 130. Um, so it will consume energy, but much lower than a zinc phosphate. Like zinc, it also produces sludge. However, the amount of sludge produced is not as great as a zinc phosphate. So normally quarterly um, or every six months, sludge will have to be removed from the washer. And then um, in regard to wastewater restrictions, phosphates again can be an issue if there are restrictions um, placed on an account from a municipality and then moving on to zirconium the type of corrosion protection um, that we see can be from standard all the way to superior performance coatings the level of performance, though, will be dependent on the number of stages. Um, we can apply a zirconium anywhere from a washer that has three stages all the way to a six stage washer. But with a three stage washer, you're going to achieve more of a standard type coating. The really nice thing about zirconium is that no to low temperature is required. 
The only thing when we look at temperature is typically we can produce a coating at temperatures from 60 degrees Fahrenheit up to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So in areas of the country um, where you experience extremely low temperatures, um, when coming into the plant, if your temperatures are below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, um, we normally recommend um, a heating source just to take the chill off of your zirconium bath um, prior to starting up. And this is normally after sitting over a weekend. The nice thing on zirconium also is that it produces minimal sludge. Um, you typically will get uh, more of a particulate that is um, he has a tendency to dust or fall on the bottom of the tank and it can easily be flushed out with a hose and um, by placing filtration on the washer if you have a 50 micron um, filter bag that can remove it or it can be also removed nicely with sand filtration and at this point in time, there are really no wastewater restrictions. Typically, the zirconium can go to drain um, after it's been used. So in summary, um, the benefits of um, the zirconium programs, you can expect to see coating performance, greater or equal to an iron phosphate program. You'll also see reduced cost in energy because we're operating at lower temperatures. And then because we're not sludging, um, our nozzles stay clean. Um, so there's a reduction in maintenance on the washer. Um, it's easy to remove the sludge and again um, there's very little cleaning of the nozzles and the last thing um, you should see reduced water usage and this is due to running at low temperatures um, you can expect to see less evaporation of the water which in turn um, reduces the usage of water Dubois zirconium programs are based on zirconium only or zirconium silane chemistries. The zirconium coatings, I'm sorry. The zirconium coatings um, are extremely small and densely packed on the surface of the metal being treated. And so the coatings are typically 50 to 200 nanometers in thickness. In comparing the zirconium coating to phosphate coatings, um, the structures for zirconium and iron phosphate will be amorphous where the zinc phosphate does develop a crystalline structure. So that is one of the major differences in the type of coating. Also the coating thickness um, on zirconiums, they range from 50 to 200 nanometers, where iron phosphates can be um, over double, approximately 350 nanometers and zinc phosphates much thicker um, at 1,000 to 5,000 nanometer. And then coating weights um, typically will range from five to 15 milligrams per square foot on zirconium treatments. Um, and I see typically we're more on the lower end um, when we've measured the coating weight. On an iron phosphate, we have 25 to 65 milligrams per square foot. Um, but there are times you can get close to 100 milligrams per square foot with the iron phosphate. And lastly, for the zinc phosphate and paint pretreatment, um, we strive for coating weights of 180 to 300 milligrams per square foot.
In comparing the differences of zirconium versus phosphate, um, we like to look at zirconium. It's the best applied at cool temperatures, not warm to hot like iron phosphate or zinc phosphate. But the zirconiums are more reactive than phosphates during the application, yet they sludge much less. And therefore, it's very easy to main um, this chemistry in a washer. They should be applied uh, from stainless equipment if you can. They can be applied via a recirculating spray washer or an immersion system. And we get um, really the best results with very good rinsing. And we want in the program when we recommend products, we look for low salt content um, applications. As we talked about, um, they're usually applied from a washer and again, recirculating sprayer immersion and you will see a change in color in the metal um, that you're treating, and that's if it's steel, um, just like you would with an iron phosphate. The application method is somewhat similar to a phosphate where the chemistry behind um, forming the coating is we pickle the metal as it enters the conversion coating step, and then we deposit the coating on the surface. Um, it, like iron phosphates and also zinc phosphate, it does require some measure of control and attention to the process. You want to make certain you're um, achieving the um, right concentration, pHs, and temperatures, times, nozzles, everything like that. And again, they work by passivating the substrate with respect to corrosion, and it does enhance the mechanical and physical paint bonding. The coating appearance of a zirconium um, coating is similar to an iron phosphate coating where you get um, colors of blue, purple, and gold forming on the metal. Um, or sometimes you can even get a mix. Um, in this slide, we're showing the iron phosphate has a pretty deep blue in this example, but you can get very blue coatings with zirconium, um, sometimes a gold, purple, um, all the same different colors that you will see with an iron phosphate. But the, a lot of times the color that you um, get on a surface, it's dependent on the substrate and process parameters, including pH concentration and the contact time of the fluid on the um, surface as it's going through the washer. Now let's look at um, a couple different type of processes using our zirconium programs. Um, you can run a zirconium process in a three-stage washer. And when we do this, um, you can expect um, to achieve up to 500 hours salt spray. And so we've rated this as a standard performance um, coating. And then going down to a five stage, um, typically you can expect to achieve 500 to 1,000 hours of salt spray performance. And we classify this as a standard to high um, performance type coating. And then going down to six stages, um, with this you can expect to get a thousand hours or greater and we'll um, assign this a high to superior performance type coding. But the one thing I also want to point out is that the performance expectations are based um, both on the conversion coding and the paint being used. The two work together with each other and then the substrate being um, treated also comes into play. So now let's look at a typical three-stage process. In this um, part 
particular example, we're looking at a dry in place zirconium program. And so this will require um, three stages and in it we typically will use a moderately alkaline cleaner. Um, and in this example, we're using GF Clean 1052. And it is being um, used to remove any type of um, contaminants, including your oils, rust preventatives, coolants, dirt. And then in the second stage, um, we like to have an overflowing um, rinse water. And if we can have it, RO is the preferred water source um, because we're looking at minimizing contamination into our dry and place zirconium. On the rinse water, we always recommend putting in an RO halo right after that rinse to give it it acts as almost like a virgin rinse because the water is very fresh and that will act as the makeup water um, for your second stage. And then in the last stage, um, we are using a um, dry in place Durling 450 um, as um, to form our conversion coating. So now let's go and look at the parameters of this process. So as I mentioned, stage one, we run that with an alkaline cleaner and we um, the GF Clean 1052 is moderately alkaline. It's good on all metals. And when we choose cleaners for our zirconium process, we like to choose our cleaners that are phosphate free so that we can say the entire program is phosphate free. This particular cleaner can run at lower temperatures. Um, we'll run it as low as 100 to 125 degrees. Um, temperature though is going to be dependent on the type of soil on the part. Um, you want to make certain that you are removing all soil and that you achieve a water break free surface. Um, our exposure time with the cleaning stage is usually 30 to 60 seconds long. After exit, exiting the cleaner stage, we then go into the rinse stage, um, which again is that overflowing rinse. Um, it should be at ambient temperatures. Um, exposure in this stage should be 20 to 30 seconds. And again, um, having that RO halo um, used as um, makeup as the makeup source makes a huge improvement in reducing contamination into stage three. And then again, stage three in this example, um, we're using our Duralink 450, which um, is a zirconium silane base um, seal. And the exposure time in this is usually, usually 20 to 30 seconds. And it does run on the acidic side. Um, the pHs that we maintain um, with this chemistry can range from 4 to 5.5. And the pH will be dependent on the process and the type of um, substrate um, being treated. The next process um, is a five stage process, um, which replaces a five stage iron phosphate program. And what we do when we convert a washer that is already in place. Um, five stage iron phosphates were always um, designed to clean in stage one, rinse in stage two. Um, the iron phosphate was normally placed in stage three. Um, four was a rinse, and then five was a final rinse or a final seal. So when we convert um, a system over to a zirconium program, um, we like to have two rinses after an alkaline cleaner to minimize any um, carryover or contamination into the zirconium stage. 
So in this example, um, we have used um, one of our highly alkaline products, GF Clean 465, um, followed again by two rinses, and we prefer RO um, if you have it, but we can also run with your city water. Um, we like to counterflow our water from the second rinse or stage three to the first rinse, um, which is stage two. And we also like to have um, or utilize the RO halo after that second rinse, um, if possible. Again, it's just that virgin water that you're rinsing with before going into the um, zirconium conversion coating. Um, the reason we want to minimize contamination into the zirconium are these um, chemistries are not um, buffered as much as a iron phosphate. And because of that, alkaline carryover into it can change the pH quickly. And it's imperative when running um, zirconium to maintain pH. If pH goes over um, the recommended parameters, you can drop out the zirconium from the bath, um, which will then um, inhibit or reduce that formation of the conversion coating. Um, in this example, um, we have used our Duratec 400. Um, which we'll discuss in the next slide. And then again, we follow that by an RO water rinse. Um, with this type of program, we typically can achieve a, around or up to a thousand hour salt spray. And again, paint and pretreatment, they're tied to one another in determining optimal um, salt spray performance. So let's look at this five-stage zirconium process in more detail, just looking at the parameters. Um, as I mentioned, GF Clean 465, it's one of our uh, most popular cleaners. Um, it's highly alkaline, but typically used on ferrous metals only. And um, with our cleaners used in a zirconium process, we like to have them phosphate free. Um, this particular cleaner, we normally run um, in a temp temperature range of 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit with exposure times of 45 to 60 seconds. And then again, we um, the cleaner stage is followed by two overflowing rinse stages where um, three is going to counterflow to two. Um, these are run typically at ambient temperatures um, at a range of 20 to 30 seconds. Sometimes stage three um, will have a longer um, period of time for rinsing if it was an iron phosphate stage that was converted to a rinse. And again, we recommend that RO halo be used as the makeup water source. And then the zirconium um, conversion coating um, is our Duratec 400. It's a zirconium silane conversion coating. An optimal time um, for exposure is 45 to 90 seconds at ambient temperatures, with that ambient temperature being um, ideally um, 70 to 100 degrees. Um, it does run at a an acidic pH, a pH of 4.5 to 5.3. And then it is um, after this develops, it's followed by um, an arrow water um, rinse. If possible, again, we can use city water, but you will see better salt spray performance when DI water or arrow water is used. Um, and then one other um, comment on the exposure time for the zirconium um, conversion coating step. We have 45 to 90 seconds, that's optimal. We have taken it a little lower um, by changing concentrations, but again, that is optimal. 
And then the last process um, that um, we want to look at is a six stage zirconium process. And um, we'll use six stages when we're trying to achieve that high performance requirement, looking at salt spray hours, say 1000 to 1500. And this um, system will replace a typical six stage iron phosphate program. And with this program, again, we're using um, the GF Clean 465 as we did in the five stage. And we follow with the two um, rinses. And then we go into zircon the zirconium conversion coating. But in this example, um, we're using Duratex 602. This is our um, last generation um, zirconium coating that was developed. And this one um, is different than the 400 in that it doesn't contain silane. It is just a zirconium only um, product. And then this is followed by the RO rinse. So everything is similar to the five stage, except for the six stage, we go into a sealing rinse. And in this um, particular example, we're using SpectraLink which is um, a silane-based um, sealing rinse. And the process parameters in here, again, they're similar um, in stages one, two, and three um, as they were in um, our five-stage zirconium process. So I will bypass that since they're the same and go into the remaining three stages. So with our Duratex 602, again, I mentioned that it is a zirconium only conversion type coating um, with um, exposure time, typically 45 to 90 seconds. That's optimal. And we'll run this again at ambient temperatures, um, ideal temperature 70 to 100. We can go 60 to 110 if you wanna take that range out a little bit more. And then we'll run this particular product in a pH range of 4.5 to 5.4. Um, we have the same overflowing um, rinse. Um, RO water is preferred. And then we go into the sealing rinse. And the SpectraLink, um, as I mentioned, is a silane sealer. Um, again, we use ambient temperature um, when it is applied, but this runs on the slightly alkaline pH scale. Um, normally, it will run around 8.5 to 9. So in conclusion, the zirconium programs typically meet performance specifications, which include salt spray um, hours and your paint adhesion. They are the most environmentally friendly um, programs or chemistries available today. Um, they're phosphate free and heavy metal free. Um, when you run them, you can serve more water because of the temperature um, that we run the program at, and it produces minimal sludge. As I mentioned, you see more of a dusting um, of precipitant um, that lands on the bottom of the tank, can be hosed away easily. Um, so we don't have to worry about um, any water or sludge going for disposal. They're very energy efficient um, programs. Um, we have customers who have saved tens of thousands of dollars going to a zirconium um, by running the lower temperature. Um, their heating um, or their um, gas bills went down significantly went down significantly, excuse me. And then um, again, because they don't really sludge, it's um, reduced labor and maintenance costs when you compare it to either an iron phosphate or a zinc phosphate. And change outs are so much easier when you have to um, change and replenish with new chemistry.
They're also simple to operate and maintain. Um, the testing is very similar to what you would do with an iron phosphate program. Um, we titrate um, for acidity, um, for concentration control of the zirconium, and then um, we do titrate for the sealing rinses and cleaners, and the cleaners are typically in alkaline titration. Um, with the um, zirconium, you do want to make, make certain you're maintaining the pH range recommended. And here we have a wide um, range of four to five, three, and we will um, set or recommend the parameter that you should run a program at based on the type of substrates being run. For galvanized, galvanil, aluminum, um, we typically will run those at a lower pH of four to four five. And then um, with the ferrous metals, cold rolled steel, hot rolled steel, um, hot rolled pickled oil castings, we typically will run four to five three. Like iron phosphates and zinc phosphates, um, you can utilize feed and monitoring equipment. Um, on this system, plus um, Duboy also offers its analytics, um, which is a data collection program. So um, that is available. And then the other thing that is um, very important is that it is cost effective. Um, typically, we'll see total operating cost. Um, we find that they're less than a phosphate program. And this is because of all the energy savings and labor and ma maintenance that's incorporated into the program. So with that, um, thank you for your attention. Are there any questions at this time? Thank you very much, uh, Michelle, for all that. That was great stuff. Um, the We did have a couple questions. So if you give me one second to be a person. Uh, the first question we have here is, since it's a conversion coding, is uh, coding weight still a good metric? Or are there better things to use, just like periodic salt spray testing or something else? So still, can, can is coding weight still a good way to determine performance with zirconium? The, because the coating is so small, um, the um, typical coating weight procedure of using um, a, the strip method with chromic acid or an alkaline strip, it's not as dependable as it is with an iron phosphate or zinc phosphate. And again, it's because of the amount. Um, some of the um, testing that has been done is by using um, x-ray for the levels, but that is um, a little bit more time intensive um, to get that reading. We have found that if you have zirconium in your bath um, through your titrations, and um, if you're seeing color on the metal, that you have developed um, a good coding to achieve your results and to just verify um, running performance testing such as salt spray would be recommended periodically. Thank you. Um, another one here that we have is at the beginning, um, zirconium wasn't really as accepted in the market. You know, are, are we seeing more um, big names or key players kind of moving towards zirconium or is it still kind of just uh, a lot of nerves about moving on forward? I would say um, in the work that I've done in the field over the last few years, zirconium really has become an accepted um, chemistry to be used. Um, I remember I've been around for many years when zirconium first came um, out. It was very difficult to run the bass. Um, you would see parts coming out bright orange and it, a lot of it was just iron oxide on the surface. 
um, bath lives were very short. Um, baths had to be dumped weekly or every other week. So they were difficult to run and maintain. Plus the results were not what had been um, anticipated or expected. But over the years, we've all learned um, the deficiencies of um, in the formulas that were initially released and formulas have been changed today to where you're developing that conversion code and you get the nice color. Um, you're not getting the flash rusting and um, the amount of time it takes to develop that coding um, has decreased. So it, it's much easier. It's to me, it's just as easy as running as an iron phosphate. And the only downside to a zirconium, and it's really not a downside, but you have to maintain um have to be certain you maintain that pH range that is given to you because if you um if your pH goes too high um and exceeds um, the range provided you can start losing the zirconium and you will lose your coating. Awesome. And what I think one more I've got here and we may have more popping in. Um, so, I mean, with the regulations we saw with zinc phosphate and iron phosphate, is there anything kind of coming down the road for zirconium? So today, um, the one compound we're seeing, we're starting to see some restrictions on is fluoride. And the most common source of um, zirconium that is used is um, the zirconium does contain fluoride. And so if anything changes in time, that may be um, something that we will have to address. Excellent. And um, this one seems a little bit more specific, but I mean, is there a specific chemistry that we recommend for descaling a zirconium tank? And uh, I guess that's one question, and then I'll ask the other, uh, other ones coming off like that. Okay, um, you can, with the zirconium systems, I have seen very little scale develop. Normally just a good clean out with a cleaner can remove it. You can, if you're doing an entire washer though, where you're doing an acid descale, I, you know, I like using the same chemistry across the board. If you're just using the zirconium tank, you can use um, an acid. Um, we have our Alidox NF or um, GF Acid Clean 3077 LF. Those are two of my favorite. But again, if there's no scale, you could just do a quick, a quick rinse with a moderately alkaline cleaner just to remove it. But with that, you'd want to be certain that you got all alkaline residue out of the washer before recharging. Awesome. A um, couple more. Uh, what equipment is normally used to maintain a zirconium bath? Uh, conductivity, pH, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Good question. <laughs> um, I've seen both used. Um, the zirconium, like all our other chemistries that are used in pretreatment, um, it does um, have a certain level of conductivity. And so you can feed based on conductivity. And then sometimes we have that additional pH because pH is so critical. We'll have that on the side just to ensure that we're maintaining that recommended pH range. Um, I've also seen if your um, part configurations are the same um, that you run, you know, day to day. Um, you could even have um, a timer used where we're constantly adding product throughout the day um, once we determine the amount of product um, that's used on average. Awesome. Um, and then we have kind of um, 
kind of a two parter. It says, uh, you know, have you ever seen a zirconium silane sealer tank that is fouled with biological matter? And if so, um, what is recommended for kind of cleaning that up? OK, yes, I have seen that um, periodically. Um, sometimes it seems more seasonal um, when I see it, but um, to control it or take care of it, um, I'd like to recommend we have a um, product that um, has biostatic properties called Defer. Um, it's completely compatible um, with our pretreatment programs, and that is what I typically use. Excellent. Um, and with that, I think that is kind of all she wrote in questions. So, um, you know, we ended maybe 15 minutes early here but before you guys jump off. Um, I just wanted to make sure and let you guys know that we're doing the last one of our series. Uh, we're talking about wastewater treatment, minimizing waste costs. The effective water solutions are Rich Moore, uh, senior product line manager. He's, gosh, he's been with Du Bois probably 20, 25 years. A lot of experience in water as well as surface finishing. Um, great knowledge on that. He's going to be talking kind of about analytics as well as, you know, waste treatment, how to design your system for it. Um, and if you are attending FabTech, Please feel free to swing by our booth. We're going to be there all four days in the finishing pavilion. I think we've got a pretty good spot in the middle of the finishing area. So make sure to uh, look for the big tower. Come on over and say hi. And I know me, myself, and Dave Shim, well, me, myself, and I, uh, me and Dave Shimp, we're going to be giving a talk, kind of a see it, touch it, fix it, which is kind of troubleshooting um, with your pre-treatment line. And then we're going from cradle to grave uh, with Dan Nesper, myself, and Dave Zarzinski. We're going to be talking about um, racking as well as all the different pre-treatment options, maybe go into depth a little bit more on some of the other options you see available. But with that, I want to thank everybody for uh, jumping on the call here. Uh, yeah, our booth number is going to be D40130. Uh, thanks for joining. I look forward to seeing you all next week. Uh, take care of yourselves and I hope you have a great afternoon. Thank you.